During this uh, little retreat, you know, we've been considering uh, certain truths of our faith that relate to Marian consecration. And, uh, you know, during her earthly life, uh, Mary too, you know, uh, pondered in her heart uh, different truths and uh, mysteries. You know, I'm sure she thought of those last words of Jesus to her, you know, Behold your son. And, you know, like Mary, uh, we need to walk by faith, by uh, pondering uh, in our hearts our Lord's words to uh, St. John, you know, behold your mother. Now, you know, because uh, Mary's maternal mediation is so central to a uh, proper understanding of Marian consecration, you know, we're going to spend some time uh, making a little retreat within a retreat. Um, and we'll do this by, you know, peering in on Mary's uh, retreat, those uh, mysteries that uh, she pondered, especially relating to her uh, spiritual motherhood. Um, and uh, so we'll accompany her along the, uh, the way that God led her to uh, progressively discover you know, her vocation as the uh, spiritual, our spiritual mother and mediatrix. Um, you know, in some since uh, Mary's retreat begins uh, even before the Annunciation. So, you know, her, every Jew was expecting the Messiah and uh, Saint Anne and uh, her mother, you know, according to the mystical city of God, they, they meditated on uh, the mystery of the, the Messiah, that God sending a redeemer and, you know, just who would uh, be his mother, and you know, when would he come? Everyone was uh, looking forward to his arrival. And uh, you know, for so for uh, anyone, you know, who is considering uh, consecrating themselves to Our Lady, uh, Saint John Paul II explains, you know, for uh, for it must be recognized that uh, before anyone else, it was God Himself the Eternal Father, who entrusted himself to the Virgin of Nazareth, you know, giving her his own son in the mystery of the Incarnation. And we know Mary surely uh, marveled at this act of humility on God's part. And Mary had uh, many other things uh, to ponder during her preparation uh, to be ever more completely our mother in the order of grace. Um, take, for example, the, uh, the passage in the Gospel of uh, St. Mark, where uh, Mary and Jesus' cousins are outside, you know, wanting to see Jesus. And, and Jesus responds, you know, by asking, who are my mother and my brethren? And he tells those, around that whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. You know, in, in giving this response, uh, Jesus wasn't uh, being a, a bad son, you know. Uh, he was being exactly the kind of son that his father wanted him to be. And at the same time, you know, he's preparing his mother um, for who he wanted her to be. Uh, he was revealing to her the, um, the new filial bond, you know, of the kingdom that goes beyond the bonds of flesh. Um, in other words, he was pointing out uh, the primacy of the spirit to the flesh, 
the primacy of the supernatural, the supernatural fatherhood of God to the natural fatherhood or the motherhood you know, of man. And it's likely that uh, Mary immediately grasped um, some of what uh, Jesus was trying to teach her. You know, after all, for years she had pondered um, in her heart, you know, another strange response of Jesus, uh, the one that uh, he gave when he was found in the temple after three days of uh, sorrow, sorrowful searching. Um, you know, did you not know that I had to be about my father's business. Um, you know, in the words that uh, we read earlier about, uh, you know, Jesus points out whoever does the will of God is my brother and, and sister and mother. You know, we can, we can be sure that Mary pondered uh, this in her heart and that uh, she realized that these words of Jesus were not rejecting her, but um, were rather preparing her. And um, St. John Paul II reminds us in his uh, encyclical letter, Mother of the Redeemer, um, as the messianic mission of her son grew clearer, clearer to her, uh, her eyes and spirit, Mary herself, as a mother, became ever more open to that new dimension of motherhood, which was to constitute her part beside her son. Now, had she not said from the very beginning, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. Through faith, Mary continued to hear and to ponder that word. Thus, in a sense, Mary as mother became the first disciple of her son, the first to whom he seemed to say, follow me. You know, and what a, uh, a joy that it must have uh, been for Jesus to have one disciple who fully understood him. You know, uh, a cons what a consolation to his heart to find the, such attentiveness to his word you know, Bishop Sheen uh, said in uh, one of his conferences that uh, God has two images of us. You know, the, the image of who he wants us to be. You know, like if we would cooperate with all the graces that he's given us, um, he has that image of, of who he would like us to be. And then he has the image of who we are. But with Mary, there was only one image. So this is who we wish to uh, consecrate ourselves to, to follow her example, to be that disciple that uh, consoles the heart of Jesus. That disciple, as Mother Teresa said, you know, who f f satiates that thirst of Jesus. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help me to be faithful to heart-pondering prayer, as was Mary.